leading couple, Sam Wheat and Molly Jensen, and Sam's workmate, Carl Bruner, together hack away at a wall, which soon collapses. An angel statue is winched up from the street, stopping level with a window. Sam swings acrobatically on a beam and kicks the statue. It swings back and into reach of waiting workmen. Molly's throwing clay on a potter's wheel, making a tall vase. A slow love song plays. Sam joins her. Molly says she couldn't sleep. It's 2 a.m. Sam sits behind Molly and accidentally ruins the vase. Molly says he should get his hands wet and let the clay slide between his fingers. Both have their hands covered in clay, fashioning the spinning clay lump. They make love. At work, Sam tells Carl there's too much money in the accounts. Carl offers to help. Sam thanks him, but it's become like a vendetta. After a theatre show, Molly says she wants to marry Sam. She asks if Sam loves her. He says he says it all the time. Molly says he only says ditto. Willie Lopez is following. An armed Lopez demands Sam's wallet. Lopez hits Molly in the face. Sam throws him against the wall. The gun goes off and Lopez flees. Sam sees his corpse in Molly's arms. Sam's hand passes right through his corpse. After Sam's funeral, Molly can't focus on her pottery and bursts into tears. Molly goes for a walk with Carl and Lopez breaks in. Sam is powerless to help. Molly returns and heads upstairs. Sam spooks the cat, which attacks Lopez, who quickly leaves. On the subway, another ghost attacks Sam. Sam has his head smashed through glass. Sam's told to stay out. It's not his train. Sam follows Lopez to building 303 and goes to apartment 4D. On the phone, Lopez says he couldn't get it. She came home. He'll try again soon. Sam finds Sister Odame Brown, a spiritual advisor, con artist. Soon, Sam vocally insults Brown. Brown asks if anyone else heard it. Sam pleads with Brown to say his name, Sam Wheat. Brown panics, then says Sam Wheat out loud, running into a closet where she starts busily praying. Brown says her mother and grandmother both had the gift. Now Brown has it. She doesn't want it. Sam says a woman's in terrible danger. The man who killed Sam is going back to their apartment. Brown calls Molly, saying she's a spiritual advisor, with a message for Molly from Sam Wheat. Molly hangs up. To persuade Brown to help, Sam sings an annoying song. Brown yells to Molly from the street. Thanks to Sam, Brown asks if Molly remembers the starfish at Montego Bay and the underwear Molly wrote her name in. Also, there's the picture in Reno and the sweater Molly knitted in the closet that's four sizes too big. When Sam makes Brown say ditto, Molly is convinced. The man who killed Sam is Willie Lopez at 303 Prospect Place, apartment 4D. Sam says Molly must go to the police. 
Sam says he was murdered and somebody else was involved. Molly then tells all this to a disbelieving Carl. Carl asks who Lopez has been talking to. Sam stupefied. Carl wants Lopez to kill Molly. There's four million dollars in a computer. If Carl doesn't get those codes and that money's not transferred, Carl and Lopez are dead. At the police station, there's no file for Willie Lopez, but Brown's got a long record. Molly won't press charges. Carl calls Eddie, giving his name. Eddie wants Carl to transfer the money into a single account under the name Rita Miller. Eddie says that five minutes before closing the next day, Carl should transfer the full account to the First Island Bank of Nassau, registry number 486-9580. Carl visits Molly. Sam's seething. Carl's brought Molly some Japanese apple pears. Molly says she went to the police but felt stupid. Brown had a lengthy record. Molly says she feels so alone. Carl tries kissing her, but Sam attacks him, accidentally breaking a photo of the couple. Molly tells Carl it's too soon. Sam searches for the subway ghost and asks how he moves things. The ghost says Sam should focus. The ghost recommends taking all your emotions and pushing them down. Then let it explode like a reactor. Sam kicks at a can and lands on his back. The ghost laughs, so Sam summons his emotion and kicks the can through the ghost's head. The ghost praises Sam. The ghost then gets emotional, discussing his having been pushed under a train. He destroys a cigarette machine. Cigarettes spill onto the floor, and the ghost yearns for just one drag. Sam asks Brown where all the ghosts at her shop came from. Brown says she hears them in the morning, and in the evening. They even come into the shower. Suddenly, Ghost Orlando dives into Brown's body. Brown's eyes go wide, and her voice changes. Brown tells Orlando to get out. Orlando lands on the floor. Other ghosts say jumping into bodies always wipes you out. Lopez arrives. Brown upturns the table and runs. Sam wants Brown to get fake IDs and a nice dress. In the bank, Sam tells Brown to tell the clerk she's there to fill out a signature card for a new account. Brown repeats account number 926-31043. She's Rita Miller. Bruna opened the account by phone. The teller asks Brown to please sign a card on the bottom line. The teller should send it up to the third floor file. Carl takes a call from Mr. Balistrari. He's got the info on the Bradley portfolio. Carl will pick it up later. John will be there till 6. It's 3.40pm. Brown pretends she knows Lyle Ferguson from the Brewster's Christmas party. She asks how they did on the Gibraltar securities. Ferguson says it looked like they topped out on that one. Brown says she's closing an account. Ferguson says it looks like Rita will be withdrawing $4 million. Brown quickly hides her shock. Brown asks for a cashier's check, providing identification. Ferguson gives Brown a document that officially closes the account, compares Brown's signature with her fake ID, 
and gives her the cheque. Outside, Sam says it's blood money. Brown should endorse the cheque, Rita Miller, and make it out to St. Joseph's Shelter. A grateful nun blesses Brown, reads the cheque, and collapses. Carl's still at work, looking for the money. Sam laughs, typing murderer on the screen. Carl asks who's doing that, so Sam pastes Sam all over the screen. Carl asks what Brown told Molly. She says Ferguson told her Brown closed an account. Brown's actual name is Rita Miller. Molly leaves for Pepto-Bismol, and Sam hits Carl in the face. Carl then threatens to cut Molly's throat. He says he needs the money at 11pm, or Molly's dead. Sam tells Brown they want the cheque. Sam urges Brown and sisters to leave. Willie and Carl break in downstairs. Willie shoots the lock off Brown's door and enters the apartment. Sam throws things at Willie, who runs to the bathroom. Sam steams the mirror, writing boo. Willie shoots the mirror, then flees. Sam pushes Willie into pedestrians. Then Willie's in a fatal car accident. Willie's spirit splits from his body. Shadows wail diabolically, attacking him and dragging him down. Brown tells Molly she's in serious danger. Molly threatens to call the police. Brown says that's good. Sam was murdered. He discovered Carl was laundering money. Then Carl tried to kill Brown. Sam asks Brown for a penny. He pushes the penny up the inside of Molly's door, holding it in the air with a finger and putting it in Molly's hand for good luck. Molly calls the police with her address. Brown says they can quickly use her body. Sam dives into it. She takes Molly's hands. Molly and Sam softly embrace. Carl starts shouting from outside. Sam's ejected and lands on the floor. Both women head for the fire escape. Carl barges in. He sees Molly up the fire escape and climbs up. Carl puts a gun to Brown's head, demanding the money. Brown says she gave it away. Carl's suddenly thrown backwards. He shoots into the room, then grabs Molly telling Sam he'll kill her. The gun flies out of Carl's hand and Molly escapes. Sam hits Carl in the face, then throws scaffolding onto Carl. A big swinging hook smashes a window above Carl and he's impaled on a falling shard of glass. Carl's spirit separates. Black diabolical ghosts carry Carl away screaming. A heavenly light appears above Sam. Shimmering, Sam gently kisses Molly. Sam says Brown's mother would be proud of her. Sam tells Molly he loves her and always has. Molly says ditto. Sam walks away into a blue and pink world of tranquility. Starring... Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore, Whoopi Goldberg, Rated 15, Directed by Jerry Zucker, Released in the UK 1990, Runtime, 2 hours, 7 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>